What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning back into my podcast. This is episode two of Maddie Moshes, and it is, in fact, election day. If you can't see, if you're watching this, I have my little I Voted sticker on because I just want to uh, express that I, you know, took it upon myself to go vote because it is my civic duty. But instead of a band with me today, I have a very special friend of mine. His name is Daniel, and I met Daniel years ago at a State Champs concert. And he has turned into one of my really, really great friends. So, Daniel, how's your day today? You know what? My day is going pretty good, pretty good. Just been sitting at work this whole time. So this is a nice, pleasant break from that. I love that. Well, I am so excited to talk about the things that we're going to talk about because it just reminds me of all the good times of when we could go to shows and hang out together and go get pizza before and then go in or run around in circles and punch each other so <laughs> i think we sound, the f- we, sound like we, have a, we, have, we sound like we have a very violent friendship we really don't i mean we watch no. out for one another i think the last show that we went to was well at least the uh us together was state champs back in november state champs we the king and simple plan oh, yeah yep and it was it, how funny is it that the first band that so we actually met um, at a state champ show, what year was it? Maybe I want to say 2016 and, uh, 2016 or either. No, it was early 2017. Okay. So around that time I went to a state champ show with a friend of mine and I was wearing, um, a state champ shirt. And what's kind of funny is that I I have this rule that it was the one time I broke it, and I don't ever go to a show. to. So if I'm going to see state champs, I cannot wear a state champ shirt. I have to wear something else because I'm not going to be that person. But I thought my state champ shirt was so cool. It was the that one that has, instead of Tommy Hilfiger, it has state champs. So mm-hmm. Dylan, our other buddy, who hopefully I might bring on at some point, he said... Nice shirt. And I said, thanks. I really like it too, which is why I broke my one rule I have and I work here. And then that's I how I met. Sta- I remember standing next to him as he said that and just hearing him say, hey, nice shirt. And in the back of my head, I was like, well, no, duh. Everybody here is wearing a state champ shirt, you idiot. And then right? I said, and then look at where we are now. And look at where we are now. I am friends with Daniel and Dylan and then Daniel's wife, Dom. And I recently got to go to your wedding almost a year ago. And That's wild if, to think about. Right. And if that doesn't show how great of friends we've become, all because Dylan liked my state champ shirt. And, and we've gone to countless, countless shows together. Which show was your favorite that, that we all collectively have gone to together as a group? Oh, God. So, in, as far as our group that's gone to shows, I, oh, man, it's a toss-up. I've I got three. I've got my, kind of my top three of shows that we went to go to. Um, number okay. three is probably going to be actually the show where we met. So, it was State Champs State and Champs. Headlining. State and Champs with Headlining. Con and Don Bronco. With Con and Don Bronco with the, yeah, with the, the opening act and. That was kind of my reintroduction into the pop punk world because yeah. I was told I was told about this show. I was told I needed to go to it. I bought tickets at the time. Me and Dom were just starting to date. She knew who State Champs was, and so we went. I ended up falling in love with their music and Dom Brokos. I was okay with with Con, so kind of yeah. They're my they're my like if they're on, I listen same. to them. Yeah, but same. Fell in love with the genre again. And yeah. started going to shows. Uh, yeah. So that was that was probably number three. Number two, that the last one we went to, State Champs, We the Kings, Simple Plan. That was just a that was high school in a nutshell for me. <laughs> I, we, oh, that show was so great, and it was it was a little rowdy, but people weren't as excited for State Champs as I wanted them to be. I was kind of mad because you know we started out a little bit was, in the back. And worked that our was way a up, and I. That was a simple plan crowd. That was very much a. Simple that was hundred percent a simple plan. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more because when they came on stage, I felt like it was a little bit of a riot there, as much as one could be for a simple plan. I mean, it's not like we're seeing, you know, Beartooth. So, it's not like it's, like it's Knuckle Puck or anything like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, love Knuckle Puck. Anyway, okay, so what's what was the number one? Number one, and you actually just alluded to it, was the A Day to Remember, Beartooth, and I Prevail show that we all went to. I love that show. That show was so good, except for the fact that I had to wear a face mask. Yeah, but to be fair, you also kind of had your nose broken in uh, like a week or two earlier than that. So. No, it was like three days because you remember it was that Friday was your bachelor party because oh, y'all right. weren't there. And I tried calling Dylan and Dylan said, I'm at, at Daniel's bachelor party. What's up? And I was like... <laughs> I just broke my nose at the one show you guys didn't go to. I and remember was, that now because yes. we were, we had just got to Austin and we were like just getting ready to go out and everything. And all of a sudden Dylan's like, so Maddie broke her nose at a concert and we're all like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you oh, mean? What a great story to tell. That is my favorite story to tell. I actually already mentioned it on the first podcast and I will tell it time and time again because it's my biggest flex is me walking out half conscious with blood all over my face. Like, yeah, I did that and I'm fixing to go relocate this and I'm going to go back out there like an idiot, (laughs) but I did. And it was a great show. I did. And then like we said, uh, that was a Friday that following Monday, we were out there at can't swim bear tooth. I prevail in a day to remember, which was a fantastic, I don't think I could have asked, for a better lineup. And that's that, that, that one show be, I can that remember. Be, that is a that is a god tier lineup. Like unless, until you start oh, talking about yes. some of the real, a true like legend bands of like rock and roll, that is a god tier lineup with like the modern day uh, with like modern day bands to get yeah. those three because any, any of those three could headline their own tour. But the oh, fact I agree. That they were, and I the, yeah, the fact that they were going together was huge. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it was kind of, you know, how you had that Hello Mega tour for the bigger bands like Green Day and Fall Out Boy, the one that never happened because of COVID. (laughs) This was was my Hello Mega tour. This was it. I was excited. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was so stoked. It was uh, was sometime in October, but it was actually just the other week because I got all, you know, my time hop stuff. But... I don't know. I think that was a great show. And there was a show that I, you know what? I think you really just missed. I think mm. a show that I really enjoyed that we went to, I'm pretty sure you were there. Um, can't swim in Trophy Eyes and Seaway. Say that again? Can't swim Trophy Eyes and Seaway. At the RBC, yes, and Depot. I was. I was at that. I was at that show. That was also that. That made my honorable mention. That that one came in at like number four. <laughs> I loved that show. I loved the red aesthetic that Trophy Eyes had, um, mm-hmm. like with all the lighting. I thought Can't Swim did a stellar job. Um, that's my. F- I think I've seen Can't Swim four or five times, and I think that was my favorite performance. That was when me and Dylan. That was when me and Dylan just came to randomly meet you at a bar in Dallas, wasn't it? Nope that that was another concert that we went to. That was after I think did Auburn lose a game, and I was seeing Trophy Eyes. (laughs) Yes, it was like that's why I got confused. I said it was Trophy Eyes because we had just lost. We had just lost a game or something. I was pissed. And Dylan was like, like, "Well, we can go over to Dallas and watch the show." I'm like, "Let's go. Get me out of here." (laughs) <laughs> right, so I if, that. That, was, that, that one was back in 2017. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. For and for anybody listening, we have seen these the same bands multiple times. Mm-hmm. And on it, Trophy so, Eyes five times. So I mean, there there are a variety of instances where we are on different yeah. pages about a concert of the same band and and things yeah, so, just. So give us if we get time. shows mixed up. Right, exactly. But I, I don't know. I think. I don't know if I could pin down my favorite show. I, it's tough I really because don't. Each show has kind of their own like memories attached to it and like this, their own feel good feelings. Exactly. So it's exactly. hard to like, but it's like, that's why when it came to me picking the three, I've made sure it was shows that we were both at. Yeah. So that's, 100%. And, then, and, then, and, when, and when I just come down to it, that day to remember Bear Seeds, I Prevail, that just was such a 
great. Like an energy, oh, as far as energy shows go, that was such a good one. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to say another honorable mention for me. Actually, okay. I might even put it in my top three. I don't know. And you might have, I feel like you're going to forget about it until I say something. Um, was that one time that we all went to go see Under Oath on a whim? It was Dance Gavin Dance and Under Oath. At, oh, yeah. Like, was it the Bomb Factory? Yep, it was Bomb Factory. And that, that was so that a one, great show. That one definitely would fall to the uh, to the honorable mentions because yeah. Under Oath was also one of those bands I listened to when I was in high school. And yeah, the nostalgia of it. It's like because oh, I miss well, this because song. I was that because I was that edgy Christian kid in high school. I obviously listened to Under Oath and Demon Hunter and all that. Yes. So yeah, a hundred percent. And their album, "They're Only Chasing Safety," is yep. absolutely phenomenal. So speaking of albums. If you had to nail down, and I feel guilty asking, I know, you already know it's coming. I feel guilty asking this question because I hate when people ask me what my favorite songs are or my favorite albums because, I don't know, it kind of varies and it depends on what mood I'm in. Um, yeah, it's a seasonal thing. It, it depends it, on mood. It is definitely it seasonal. A lot of stuff. Yeah, there are albums that I appreciate more, and this sounds so corny, that I appreciate more during the fall than I would in the summer. I don't want to listen mm -hmm. to Turnover's Peripheral Vision in the summer, <laughs> and I don't want to listen to Proper Dose by the story so far in the middle of spring. I really don't. Well, and Those and are two like albums simple, I listen to in the fall. Plan, like, bands like Simple Plans need play better in the summer because they are, I like, agree. State champs as well. St. Champs is a summer Champs band. It's my go to summer band. Like one hundred percent. There's also there's also bands that I can listen to all year round that kind of just are out and about for me. And so I'll say this Movements. Movements hundred mm -hmm. percent. I can listen to Day and Night, twenty five eight. Um and Pierce the Veil as well. So Oh yeah. Now okay, what's so funny let's, is I may I may pick a uh, an album that maybe oh, yeah. isn't traditionally pop punk. But mm -hmm. it's something that, as, and again, we, I may go with the top three here just because nailing down my number one album is very hard. Oh, yeah. No, I was going to give you the top three option. That's fine. Give me your top three. Okay. So. In no specific order. And see, oh, yeah, okay. Like. I'm glad you did that because I was going to, I was like, picking my number three is hard because that's the. It, yeah, that's the one that's going to edge out everything else. Yeah. So. Okay. At number three, I'm going to have to go with What Separates Me From You by A Day To Remember. That is my favorite A Day To Remember album. 100%. That is, that is, I mean, that album leads off with Sticks and Bricks. So oh, when you get songs like Sticks and Bricks 100%. and Right Into All I Want, you get Second Sucks, uh, Better Off This Way, All Signs Point To Lauderdale. Like, you got some... What is what I consider bangers. the music, the bangers, Straight the bangers the all the way there. through that album, all the it way. It really through. is. So when you hear it, like that is like when I say when I'm talking about they remember, I'm talking about the albums like What Separates Me from You, Homesick, for those who have hearts. The heavier albums. albums. Yes, like the yes, new stuff. The I like. Stuff. I like the new stuff. I do appreciate the new stuff, but like, man, there's something about those albums that are just they hit in such a different way. Yes, I, I agree. So you've got what separates me from you, a day to remember. What where's number two fallen? So number two is man, and this is this was a tough one because so for number two, I'm gonna have to go with the disease album from Bear Tooth. I really like that album. That is I mean, if if I showed you my Spotify right now, every song is liked, every song is saved. So that when I'm offline, I can hear them. It's yeah. just good. It's just, I mean, Beartooth, Beartooth to me is like, if you're in the, if you're in the pop punk or just flat, flat out punk scene, you know, Beartooth, you love Beartooth. Uh, but Absolutely. then the people who aren't so much in the music scene, like we are, will yeah. hear it and be like, Oh, like rock and rollers who maybe don't listen to pop punk or something like that. will hear Beartooth and go, Ooh, yeah, I like that. I agree. Okay, so now give me your your third, if you can think of a, a of a strong third. Um, well, so this is actually my this is going to end up being my number one. 
Okay, uh, so this is your this is your favorite album. This is my favorite album of all time, and I don't okay. know that I'll ever be able to replace it. And again, this I'm is ready. one of those ones that it's my favorite album, but I don't always listen to it. Everybody has whether, that. whether it's for seasonality or whatever, but the it's it's gonna come from the days of Reliant K, their two thousand four release album. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that the one with the little uh, flower on it? That the one with the flower on it, yeah. With the uh, what's that song that I love on there? Which to bury us or the hatchet? Yep, which to bury us or the hatchet on that album? That's got classics yes. of bands like Be My Escape, uh, Which to Bury, Who I Am Hates Who I've that Been. That's a really good album. That's that a is really good album. Such a good album. And Reliant K was one of my favorite bands. It still is one of my favorite bands, but I'm real sad they aren't putting out any more music currently. But that yeah. mm-hmm album was I like peak, it was peak Reliant K. It came yeah. right after, it came like a year after Two Left Don't Make a Right which is yep. another really good album by them. Yes. Uh, I... so that's that's going to have to be my top three. With, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my honorable mention. Another band that I've seen them live that I don't think that you and I haven't seen them together. Um, it was their 2018 release from the band MXPX. Okay, so I don't yeah. Know, I don't listen I don't to them, but I know of them. So, so I would recommend go check out their 2018. It's a self-titled release. Okay. Uh, that whole that's one of those albums I will listen to it front to back, no skips. No skips. No skips. I've got a few albums like that. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good half hour listen to go from front to back on the album. Yeah, well that's, so it's, a, that's it's a quick it's a quick listen, but man, is it good. So I just thought of something that I wanted to ask because I wonder. I bet you would guess it. I don't even know if it would take you long to think about it. So I have a favorite album. I won't go through my top three. I'll save some time here. I have one album that I absolutely, without a doubt, deem is my favorite album. And do you know what it is? Um, is it the Feel Something album by Movements? Absolutely. That is my favorite album of all time. Can't get enough of it. Listen to it all day, every day. And I was very nervous when they recently dropped back uh, in October this past month, three days ago. Mm -hmm. Um, No Good Left to Give. Have you listened to it? I I have yet to listen to No Good Left to Give. You're you're wasting your time. You need to go listen to it because I, (laughs) I mean, so just for anybody who doesn't really listen to music the way that we do, you're, you have a sophomore album. So you have your freshman album, you put it out there. Everybody loves it. It's fantastic. But can you do it again? So your sophomore album, it's a make or a break. Movements, their, their freshman album, my favorite album ever. I was very nervous for their sophomore album. And it was an absolute hit. I love it. I can't get enough of it. I listen to it every day. I wake up. I turn on my Spotify. I play it. And it's I'm going through one of those phases. I, the same phase that I went mm-hmm. to went through with Feel Something. The same phase that I went through. This will be a top three album for me, so we can have Feel Something. My second one would be Chemical Miracle by Trophy Eyes. I think that's a fantastic. Album. Mm, that's a good one. That's a really Talk good to one. Finish, Trophy, no Eyes, Trophy Eyes always sit as my as like a band that I, they have such a different sound to them, and it's weird because yeah. it's not. It's like nobody else in the genre. Oh, I agree. And they have three albums. And I don't think, I mean, they didn't really, they weren't too popular from their first album, Men to Move On. But they really hit their sophomore album. Mm -hmm. So to me, personally, I felt like their junior album was going to be a real make or break. Um, Which ended up being the American Dream. That first show where restrictions are lifted and everyone's allowed to be in the same room again is going to be so lit. I will have to Uber to that show because I will be off my face. Right. I walked past somebody smoking a cigarette the other day, and I immediately thought of a concert. I was like, that smells just like a show. I miss them. But, I mean, just <laughs> – I it's – those. that was what I looked forward to. Every every month, whenever we decided to go, was going to shows and running around and acting like a kid 
and having a great time and making Daniel and Dylan and random people pick me up and throw me on the crowd so I can crowd surf and, you know. Or making one of us carry you on our shoulders so that you could be, like, seen by the band. Yeah, making Daniel put me on his shoulders so I can tell Derek Descania from State Champs Champs how much I uh, absolutely want to be with him, Derek. (laughs) <laughs> if you're watching this, man, I'm really banking on a lot of people watching this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, like I, I said, we need, to go to a, we need to go to a Stars game next year and maybe we'll see him. He does go to Stars games. So, yep, that'll be he great. The new And the new uniforms. Um, anyway. I got mine today. Did you really? Oh. I did. Get, I got the blackout jersey. It's going to be sweet. <laughs> nice. Well, all right, I oh, it was so nice to reminisce on the good times of live music pre-COVID. Um, Absolutely. But thanks for taking the time to come on, and if anybody out there is listening to this, I want to thank you so much for listening to my podcast. It means a lot. I hope you listen to some of these albums we talked about. Maybe check out some of these bands that we listen to. And if you do, and you like this video, I will personally buy your ticket. I think everybody should experience coming to a show that we go to because it is such a good time and I have, even the night that I broke my nose nobody had a bad night, including myself I I relocated it and I went on Um, I feel like it's impossible to have a bad time so yeah, thanks for listening everybody and check back again next week when I have a new episode